Hey everybody, Christopher Rod here, and uh, this is a game called Deep Sky Derelicts. Uh, it's coming out into early access very soon, it's supposed to release sometime in November. Uh, the publisher reached out and asked if I'd be interested in trying it, and after playing it for a couple of hours, I gotta say, there's something, there's something going on here, and I'm digging it. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, so what is it exactly? Well, the best way I can describe it is you take the gameplay of, say, Darkest Dungeon, and you combine it with a visual approach of more comic book sci-fi. But then the combat is, I guess the best way to describe it is like tactical card combat. So there's a lot of kind of random elements. You have to do the best with the cards that you have at the time. I'll show you more of the actual gameplay, of course, but that is the best succinct description that uh, I could muster. So, let's get into a campaign here, and I'll explain a few things as we go, um, from my understanding. The difference between this and Darkest Dungeon, first of all, is that, uh, Darkest Dungeon, you have a constantly rotating roster of, uh, of heroes or characters. This one, you start with three, and, uh, you want to keep them alive as long as possible. You're not rotating, you're taking them out everywhere. You can come up with a team name, I like the, I like the Bare Bones. That's not so bad. And then uh, you can customize their names as well. So we'll go Odd, we'll go Iram, and we'll go Dexter. So that's me and my wife and my dog. Uh, we've got six different classes. So you've got the Tracker, the Bruiser, the Technician, the Medic, the Leader, and the Scrapper. Uh, each of them have different attributes. Um, there's weaponry, tech, medical, scavenging, and mental. The stronger they are in any given attribute, the bigger the bonuses they get for that type of interaction or damage or what have you. Um, I've experimented with a couple of different uh, setups. So far, I like having a bruiser. We'll put we'll put Dexter on bruiser. You can kind of be like the tank. Um, traditional RPG roles would be like tank, healer, DPS. Uh, I tried having like a medic, uh, I didn't think it was as strong, but I'm probably just not utilizing it as well. Uh, so we'll go with like, I'm gonna go as a tracker for more DPS, and then we'll go technician for Iram. Which, side note, couldn't be further from the truth in real life. She tries her best, she's learning a lot of technology stuff for the past few years. You know, she's, she'll get there. Uh, and then you can customize the, uh, photo. There's a bunch of them to choose from, and I'm sure this will expand, uh, as the game goes on. So, let's go with, like, a tracker. You gotta have the eye implant to be a tracker, obviously, that only makes sense. Uh, the technician, we could do something like this. And then the bruiser, we could go with... Ooh, I kinda like this. He kinda looks like a bulldog, like Dexter does, you know? Uh, so we're gonna go with Tracker, a Technician, and a Bruiser and start our campaign. There's gonna be a little bit of a story introduction, and then we're gonna get into the gameplay. Welcome, Scavenger. I've been expecting you. Now I don't need to tell you that the world is unjust. You must know it better than most. Being an aristocrat myself, I can only imagine the hardships you stateless must endure. That's why I'm offering you a possibility to leave that brutal life of yours behind. Really? What's the offer? I want you to find the fabled mothership and secure it. As a reward, I offer you full galactical citizenship. Yeah, but the mothership, this is just a myth. I understand your skepticism, but the mothership is not a matter of belief, but an astonishing fact you should learn to appreciate. Besides, I wouldn't offer a full citizenship for anyone who finds the mothership if I thought it was just a myth. Our scientists have discovered that the mothership is hidden somewhere in this sector. We have strong reasons to assume that it is filled with technological wonders beyond belief. The Triumvirate is willing to pay anything for it. Find it and I will grant you citizenship. Needless to say, you would be rewarded with a one-way ticket to an easy life in a comfortable and beautiful mirror world. This sounds a little too good to be true. Why me and how am I supposed to find it? I hear that you're experienced in combat and know your way around the derelicts. I trust my sources are right. Start looking for leads. Get into the bridge section of each derelict you go to 
and try to find something that could contain useful information. Anything that hasn't been corrupted by the millennia those ships have drifted in space. Not every derelict necessarily provides the needed information, but with enough data from the derelicts, our researchers can put together the location of the mothership. I can do that. Where do I start? Consider getting some contracts from the Lair to help keep your expeditions profitable and head to Shuttle Bay to depart to one of the recently discovered derelicts. Okay, and what about my team? Does the offer concern them as well? Yes, your entire team is granted with the same privileges, should you find the mothership. Okay, I've heard enough. Report back to me as soon as you find any information about the mothership. Prove yourself worthy, and I'll grant you a broader working permit. If you manage to find and secure the mothership, the citizenship is yours. But bear in mind that you are not the only one I've extended this offer. Act quickly, scavenger. There we go. So that's the basic setup for the story of Deep Sky Derelicts. Uh, that voice that you heard is a community member, uh, part of uh, my Discord channel. I put out a call asking if anybody would like to just voice this part. It's not voice acted in the game, that's just me adding it after the fact. It's a neat little fun thing, uh, but I thought he did a really good job and embodied that character really well. So let's, uh, let's get going. So, this is the station we can prepare here for our missions. Let's check out the lair for contracts. There's good money in them. Should also check out the pawn shop for useful items and sell anything we're not using. So, eventually we will do that. We have a few things to interact with in this area. Uh, we've got Deep Sky Medical, Station Hall, the pawn shop, and the Mercenary Hub. This is where we get contracts. We're going to start here. Uh, these are different every time. Uh... That she says, welcome to the lair. Believe it or not, this is the entertainment center of the station. We sell drinks to soothe the pain, and we keep track of open contracts. If pain is your thing, dear. So, uh, let's see. We've got Honest Scrapping. We're, we at Honest Hanks Scrap Palace are always looking for good condition scrap at a fair price. Bring us three intact T-model janitor robot parts, and we'll compensate, compensate you fairly. So let's take that. And then Rackness, egging for science. We're looking for people proficient in combat to help us secure a rare Mauworm egg for research purposes. A Mauworm is was spotted by one of our biologists on the board on board the derelict Rackness. Contact the biologist near the landing zone on the derelict Rackness for more details. And this is the way that you make money in the game uh, and progress it. You're going out to these old derelict ships and exploring them and trying to fulfill these contacts and gaining more information uh, that could lead to this mothership which you want to find so that you can be a citizen in that kind of nicer world than what we've been used to. So we'll take this. They said they're near the entrance or near the starting point. So uh, let's actually jump out here. We click the ship. Uh, there's three different places we could go. And we can go to any of these if we want, uh, but we know we have a destination on Rackness um, to try and find some information. Nice thing is we're taking the Deep Sky Express, so we'll take you there alive or your money back. Seems like a good deal to me. Um, over here, there's just some flight details. I'm not sure if that actually matters at this point. There's water and cookies included. Don't know if that has any... I don't know. We'll see in the future. Refill energy might be something that we run into later. And then there's uh, a cost. Right now, it's free. Free travel in the authority of the sub-governor's office. So, let's rock and roll, and I'll show you what this is like. Okay, we're here. Return here and contact me when you are ready to go back to the base. Be safe out there, guys. Thank you. Check out the PDA so we know where we're going. So, uh, this, you, this might look kind of familiar to the map in Darkest Dungeon, and that's because it is. <laughs> it's very similar. Uh, there is a legend for things that we can run into. Um, this is where we are. This is also the exit. Uh, there's loot out here. There's hostiles, so or something unknown, which is this upside down triangle, and then there's energy sources. The important thing to understand is this is our total energy capacity right now. Every time we move, we're going to use or expend some energy. We also need to make sure that we have enough energy to come back to the exit. If we go too far and we don't have enough energy to come back, we die, game over, that's it. So uh, some careful planning is necessary. Now we can also scan for five energy. 
and uh, we will do that, but because we have a destination right here, I'm going to jump to it and we'll see what this is. So here's the scientist. Uh, we They noted that we would find them near the entrance, so no doubt. Fresh faces. Are you here about the mawworm eggs? Uh, yeah. We're here about the contract. Splendid. Unfortunately, I can't pinpoint the exact location of the nest. All my scouting efforts were blocked by vicious wormlings. I'll highlight the spots where I met those nasty little creatures on your scanner. While I explored, I happened upon a console. I managed to hack it with the pass, uh, and the password was... I don't even know how I would ever say that, but uh, let's call it Ceylon with a silent, silent P, I guess? S-E-A-L-O-N. Cool. Now, I've played through a couple of different campaign runs. Every single one has been different so far, um, which is pretty cool. So I don't know if we need to remember this password, if it remember it for us, but hey, it is what it is. Are you with the Science Institute? Yes, I'm Keenon Plock, a biologist. I was sent here to observe the maw worm in its natural habitat and collect one of its eggs for research, but they are pretty territorial and I don't have the equipment nor the training to beat them in combat. Which is why I contacted HQ to put up a contract to get combat ready people down here to help me with the task. All right, we can do that. Goodbye, Keenan. Okay, so, took us two energy to get there. He has marked some locations here, which is, of course, all the way across from us. Uh, we're gonna start moving and we'll do some scans and try to work towards that location. Um, so that's okay. So we just scan that same area now there are not all of these slots are open So that was kind of a wasted scan. We want to go to a blank one and then we'll scan again More than likely we won't be able to reach here on our first go through this derelict um, This looks like we might have some loot here These are both things that we can sell so we'll take those Let's come down here. I always like to kind of hover back uh, towards the exit point and see how many uh, energy it'll cost. So it'll cost seven right now to get back. Okay, it's looking good. Hello. Okay, so I actually landed... I'll show you when we get back here. We found some more stuff. Sometimes you get like weapon add-ons, weapons, etc. Um, so far, just stuff we can sell. These things we haven't revealed, so... You know, at your own risk, you can step onto those and see what happens. That one just happened to be... It would have shown loot, like a line like this. Uh, I think if there's only one line, it's a very small amount of loot. The more lines, the more loot that you get. Alright, so we have some type of encounter here. Let's see what's up. Here we go. A group of lizards are scurrying about the room. Suddenly, they stop and stare at you. Nega Kalnaz Hakazar? Uh, pretty close. I'm sure that I translated that perfectly. Uh, let's throw down. We'll show you what the combat's like. Alright, so, uh, these guys on the right... I guess they're gonna go first, so we'll see. This is like, I kind of dig this little comic book style interaction that they have. Now, um, they don't have any armor. We do have armor. A lot of enemies also do have armor. You have to go through the armor first before you can hit the health. Um, and this is where I really like the combat. It makes for uh, a really varied approach. You're not always just spamming the same type of attacks or actions. Um, it's based on the cards that you draw from your individual character's deck. So we'll show you that in a bit, but right now we've got four cards available for uh, us. We have the self-recharge of our shields, which we don't need. Single strike, we do 100% weapon damage. We can mark a target so that they take um, more damage, less damage re resistance for three turns. And you generate focus on each attack of the target. And it focus makes it so that subsequent attacks on that target are stronger for you. So pretty good. And then single shot, again, does 100% weapon damage. Um, this is single strike with the blade. You see that at the bottom. This is single shot with the ranged weapon. So you can see what... Um, what is driving the card, whether it be an ability, the blade, the shield, or the ranged weapon. Okay, so we are going to go ahead, let's mark a target. 
And then we can kind of try and focus him down. So Ram, she's got a shield boost, add 25% of max shield, does temporary shield points to an ally for two turns. If you crit, and everything, almost everything can crit, um, then you would get two times the shield, which is pretty strong. We don't need, uh, we might want to buff up Dex down at the end there. He's going to try and be our tank. A uh, single shot for 100% damage. Burst fire, 3060 weapon damage per shot, fires three shots. And then uh, recharge 33% of shields to the target. This is why I like the technician, because there's a lot of work with the shields that they can do. Um, because we've reduced the resistances here, I'm going to take the burst fire here and see what we can do. There we go. Uh, now, Dexter's got a couple of things here. He's our big bruiser. Uh, single strike, bash, so you take 90% of the damage, and the target receives minus 5 initiative for two turns. The higher the initiative, the earlier in the round that you actually go. So this would knock them back a couple of turns, which gives us an, a chance to kill them before they have an attack. Uh, provoking strike, 100% weapon damage, and then you taunt. This is what we want to do with our bruiser primarily, especially early, so that everybody attacks him. And then we have Stunning Blow, 85% weapon damage to a target, 50% chance to stun for two turns. We're going to go Provoking Strike. We'll go down here. It's going to do 10 damage, which should kill him. Um, and it's doing that much extra damage because of the buff that we have on there. Minus 15 uh, damage resistance. So let's go. There we go. Let's see what they got. So he is now taking actual health damage, which isn't ideal, but... He's a tank for a reason. So let's focus in. We could mark again if we wanted to. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's mark again. We'll boost his shields now. We'll go... with this one. And then he can... Uh, yeah, we could do Bash, so knock down his initiative, and then we could probably finish him. He'll probably move to the back of the order here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, not quite. So, they must have a really high initiative, these guys. Because that wasn't even enough to knock him back, uh, which is interesting. There's a lot of different uh, enemy types. And you'll have to learn about them as you go and what works and what doesn't. Um, but let's see if we can't take him down. We need 8 damage on this guy. We're going to get 9 with this because of all his problems. So let's go. Uh, we could continue to boost shields, but I think now we're going to just try and focus this guy down. We can go for a stun. 50% chance to stun for two turns. Flip a coin. See what happens. Not quite. Okay, we can finish him off. There we go. So that's like the very, very basics of combat. Um, they did drop a couple of interesting things here. So a level three light ranged weapon. We'll see if we can maybe use that on our tracker. Uh, we have a level 2 medical tool. Uh, it gives you 6 medical and 6% evasion plus the two cards uh, inserted into your deck. So pacify which prevents the use of attack cards for one turn and hard reset positive and negative purge on the target. Pretty cool. And then uh, use this to gain 30 energy. This is actually huge because you can use energy so you can keep exploring the derelicts. So that's actually a, a really good find for us. Uh, so if we go into our inventory, we have a precision ranged weapon here. This is a light ranged weapon. We could change this. Um, we could go from the level one precision, which gives an aimed shot, um, which is pretty powerful. It didn't come up in that uh, interaction, but it's 110 to 140% weapon damage, minus 5% critical success chance, which is fine, but it's a lot of damage, and then you have the single shot. If I replace it with this one, then we get the cards where single shot's 12, which is still way better because it's level 3, and double shot, 80% weapon damage per shot, fires two shots. 
I think it's a no-brainer to roll with this for now. You can see that this is the entire deck um, for us as the mercenary, and that's driven by our ranged weapon, our energy blade cards, our tool cards, and our shield core cards. You can replace all of these, you can add on to these uh, in these slots, and that will give you more or less cards depending on what you're adding. Now, as you probably surmise, it's not always ideal to just throw in as many cards as possible because that means the chance of your strong cards coming up is lower. So you kind of want to have this balance. Um, but, I mean, that will probably only really matter in late game. So right now, we could replace this tool. He's got a level 1 weapon tool, um, which reduces damage resistance. We could replace that with the pacify and the hard reset. But I think that that may actually be better over here because she has um, basically two things that are doing kind of the same thing card-wise. Restoring 33% of shields to the target, which is good, uh, but I don't think we need four of them in our deck. So we're going to replace this tool and uh, now we'll have pacify and hard reset. So. Pretty good start. That that ranged weapon that we found for Odd, our tracker, is going to be really, really strong. Uh, there's also an ability tree, I guess you'd call it, or a skill tree. Uh, as they level up, uh, the, as this gets fuller, then you can level up into different areas as well. This game in its current release, I believe, maxes out at level 3. Um, but even as such, it'll take you a few hours to go through, like, a full campaign and, uh, max out these guys. It doesn't happen very quickly, so, yeah. Uh, there's a couple of things here now. Um, let's take a look. So, there's the Atred, uh, Derelict. There's Rachnus Egging for Science, which we picked up. There's Honest Scrapping. Uh, Volarize, which is a different derelict, and then this one, again, Rachnus, we're finding location data aboard the derelict. Um, this is active in every single one of the derelicts, is trying to find this location data. The more of these you find, the more information you get about that mothership. Um, and the contracts are things that you kind of do along the way, if that makes sense. So let's go back to the scanner and let's scan. So far, so good. Now we have 38 energy left. It's going to take 14 to get back, but remember we have a medium energy cell in here to gain 30 energy right now. Um, so we can continue going. We have another encounter here, which I'm okay taking. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's see what's here. Okay, we've got these janitors. Now, if you remember, one of the contracts we had is we need to bring back three intact janitor parts. So we might be able to get those all right here. Now, these guys, as you can see, do have shields. So, staggering, as you may have noticed there, um, that is reducing our initiative, basically. So that can push people um, to the back of the queue. Uh, if it stacks up, and depending on what everybody's initiative is right now, it could have more or less of an impact. Uh, so, let's see. This guy's the strongest at the top. We may want to try and take him down. Uh, we could mark him as a target. And then we could try and focus him down. Uh, if we want... Which janitor's going next? So if you hover over the cards, it'll show an arrow above their heads as well, so you can know um, who to target. Uh, I think we can go Pacify, so we can prevent the use of attack cards for one turn. Basically, we know we're generally going to be safe-ish. <laughs> uh, but let's go on, on whoever would go next. He can still, like, apply buffs or whatever, but he seems like he doesn't have anything that can help in this scenario. They're all full health, full shield, so not surprising. Uh, okay, Dexter, let's do single strike weapon damage. Now this guy, he does have one armor, so normally this shot that does nine damage would only do eight, but because he's got that damage resistance on here, we're still doing the nine. Uh, you can only see the armor as far as I can tell by hovering over them. Uh, this guy has one armor, but there's no indicator outside of that 
as far as I can tell. So, just something to be aware of. Okay, good stuff. And they can dish it out, actually, pretty heavily. Um, we will go single strike up here again. Generating that focus. Shields are getting a little bit low here. Oh, hello. Shields are getting pretty low. Uh, inflict... Okay, this is a cool card. Disrupt. Inflict disruption of the selected type. Melee, ranged, buff, or debuff for two turns. So, if we want, we could put this on one of these guys and say, uh, no range skills for two turns. Or no melee skills for two turns. Or no buffs or no debuffs. Uh, these guys are basically shooting a lot, so it'd be nice to put that on there. But, we also need to recharge shields. Um, I do think... Since we're targeting him, we may as well try and focus down the others. It's tough to say because he is going next, so unless we can kill him, which I don't think we can, it might be wise to have him not attack us. So let's go here again. We'll say no range skills for you. Okay, so we've got Bash again, 90% of the damage, received minus 5 initiative, which may knock him back to the queue, we'll see. Yeah, so, okay, cool. So did you see that? He did get knocked back there. Uh, he did not, in fact, like, skip his turn because of the other card. The initiative was enough to put him back. Uh, let's keep knocking him down if we can. Okay, so Iran doesn't have any attack cards now. And this is where I like this card-based approach. Like, normally I would just say, let's keep hammering down on that strongest target over there. But there is some luck involved. Um, and you, you really need to rely on the, the cards that you have in your hand at the time. So, let's go with a shield boost up here. It's a pretty hefty chunk. All right, now we're taking some health damage in the middle. Um, let's do a shield recharge on yourself, since we can't even attack. And there we go, we got single strike back. Let's try and kill this guy. It's gonna be close. These guys are actually dishing out quite a bit of damage. This could be problematic. I do want to recharge shields. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and do that and we'll have Dexter finish off the guy up top. You can also spend 10 energy to boost and boost will give you the ability to play two cards. Um, considering we only have 12 and we're going to have to use the other one, uh, that canister, to get additional so we can make it home. Uh, probably not going to use boost here. Let's go provoking strike and that'll taunt the others. So that he can absorb most of the damage for a bit. Alright, we might as well go ahead and go minus 33% damage resistance. So the attacks against him are more powerful. Alright, here we go. So let's go burst fire. Very nice. It's a good boost, even like 33%, those small amounts, they start to make a big difference. Provoking Strike again. Now what you're seeing here, this is all pretty basic, right? But as you can imagine, as you start to upgrade your weapons, you get the add-ons, you get different utility items. Uh, you get a wide variety of different cards, and you can pull off some pretty cool combos. Um, Let's see. I will... You already have the most shields. Oh, uh, no we don't. Yeah, I better, I better shield up here. Just to be safe. Actually, he does have the taunt there, does he? Oh, I don't know. I don't think he has it anymore. Uh, he's now got three bleeding for three turns, so that's great. Actually... We can purge that. 
So let's do so. Good job, Aram. This guy's healing. That's fantastic news. Until it isn't. We really need an attack card. Real bad. There we go. Single shot. This is the first time this one came up, I think, where he's had that boost. And we haven't seen the really strong one yet, I don't think. Oh, we crit. Cool. There we go. Nice shot. Uh, let's go shield boost down at the end. Still doing okay. Stunning blow. 50% chance to stun. Not bad. Double shot. <laughs> Here we go. 2 times 10. Got him. Alright, cool. Now, we've got level 2 spread ranged weapon mod. Scrap. And then here's those janitor parts. So that'll complete that contract, as you can see. And then when we get back, we can turn it in. Um, so our ranged weapon right now is not a spread shot. So we can't really use this. We will save it, though. These ones are for the contract. This one we can sell. Um, I think we'll keep the tech tool. Level 2... Level 2 tech tool. Maybe we can give that to somebody else. Detect vulnerabilities. I think that's pretty good to have, though. What about you? Maybe we don't need you to have detect vulnerabilities. And instead, a shield recharge would be a little bit better. And we can sell that. So these are all for sale. And this we're going to use right now to get our energy back up. Let's go back here. So it's going to take us 18 to get back. Um, I could move 1 to take us to 31. I could scan for 5 and it'll take us 19 to get back. And that'll be... Pretty much it. So it looks like we could probably connect through this way. Um, but that's going to be about the max right now. So let's... Let's walk back for 19. And I kind of like this idea of like, you can go deep into these derelicts, but you go, you if you don't manage the energy, like, if you run to zero, that is like, that is it. So, you like, it's done. Game over. And I've had that happen to me. I'm like, I miscalculated and that's murder she wrote. Um, cool. So now we're back here, but we have no energy. So if we go into the pawn shop. Uh, you can fill energy reserves for a certain amount. We have 1,400 credits right now. It's going to cost 94 to refill. So we will do that. Uh, we'll sell off the junk that we don't need, which is this stuff. These are just scrap and junk components. We'll sell off these two things that we're not going to use anymore. And then we could also consider buying different things. Uh, here's an interesting one. It's a, it's a tool that we could replace called... Um, it gives us the card Draw Fire. Where you taunt, and then you get extra damage resistance for two turns. So on somebody like uh, Dex, that would be really good. Uh, here's a level one medical tool where you get two hard resets and a pacify. That's actually really nice. Plus you get a 20% chance to apply 27% um, damage bleed for two turns. So that's like, that's actually really nice to have. We could buy that. Let's buy that actually. Level three energy blade. So you get quick strike which is 100% weapon damage. Uh, play another melee card if available. That's very cool. And then 100% weapon damage. This one you can combo. I like that. I've never seen that card before. Let's take it. And uh, Kinetic Node, level one melee weapon mod. Shockwave Strike. So this is, you add this to a melee weapon. Does 75% weapon damage and either stagger one or minus two initiative for a turn. Uh, to primary target and adjacent enemies. So it's also pretty good. Um, here's a level 2 tactical visor. Draw two weaponry cards. So if we ran into that situation earlier where we didn't have any attacking cards, this would help us. Weapon enhancer, plus 66% weapon damage for two turns. And detect vulnerabilities. So this is also quite good. And then, if you want, you can buy uh, energy cells, which I think is always a good idea to have out there. Take a couple of those. 
Now, we are going to make some money by turning in our contract for those janitor parts. We still have the live contract, as you know, and we got an indication that they were uh, deeper into the derelict. So, again, different from something like uh, Darkest Dungeon, where you go into the dungeon, if you make, great, if you don't, that's it. Uh, you, you're going back into a derelict to try and explore further each time. Once you complete that derelict or you find the, the information hub, um, then you would move on to the next one. You can, I mean, you could go to anyone if you wanted to. You could go to Volarize, you could go to Atred. But I think it makes sense that you would want to go back to the one that you came from. So, that's the basic gist. Very basic, um, start, for sure. Um, but I like to akin this, I like to think of this as the way that Darkest Dungeon started. When it first came out, it was super, super basic. Like, when it was first releasing, and, uh, obviously these guys have taken a lot of inspiration from Darkest Dungeon. There's things that they're doing that are, uh, different and interesting compared to Darkest Dungeon. You can see, uh, the art style is similar, but it's more science fiction, more comic book style. Um, it's cool. I like it. I, I don't, I guess I shouldn't be only comparing it to Darkest Dungeon, but that's just the game that I have in recent memory that... Um, I would liken this to so I think I'll take a break here. Uh, let me know what you guys think This is again deep sky derelicts and uh, it's gonna be available in early access on Steam uh, Very soon I would imagine I actually don't have the date I don't believe the specific date has been announced, but I'll put links to the uh, Steam page in the description and uh, Yeah, very cool. Thanks to uh, Snowhound games and 1c company for reaching out and uh, asking if I'd be interested because uh, it's pretty cool if you like the Darkest Dungeon style of games. Like, you have the roguelike, you've got the card stuff in here, um, you've got, obviously, RPG influences. I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes, and th that's all I can say. I'll definitely be following it through, so... Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, then uh, drop a like on the video and share it with your friends. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. But uh, all I want to say is thanks for watching and take care of each other. Bye.